Hey curl friends, I'm Bianca Renee and you're watching Bianca Renee Today and today is another episode of Curl Talk and we're going to talk all about adding color to your hair. The truth about dyeing your hair from bleach to ammonia to damage. Should you do it? How often do you do it? We're going to answer all those questions right now. Now starting off, I am not a licensed professional hairstylist. I am just a girl who's gotten her hair colored four different times and has maintained beautiful, healthy curls without getting damaged. But to add some credibility to this video and everything I'm saying, I do have a lot of hairstylist friends and I was able to call them and bug them and ask them a million questions to make sure everything I say in this video is accurate. So shout out to Felicia Elise and Kristen Brown. They both are curly hairstylists that as you can see, have experimented with color and are doing just fine. So let's talk about the main reason why most of you or many people are afraid of adding color to their hair. It's because they're afraid of getting damaged. Obviously, right? Now I'm gonna keep it real real in this video. This is the truth, right? So we gotta keep it 100. I would be lying if I said that it's absolutely impossible to damage your hair by adding color because that would be a lie. Adding color to your hair is all about the type of color that you're using, how you're applying it, and how often you're applying it. So let's start off with the number one question. How do I dye my hair without getting damaged? Well, I have added color to my hair a total of four times. And three out of the four times I used the Clairol Textures and Tones line. And I actually have a full video on how to apply this hair color at home. I will link that above and below. But the great thing about this one in particular is that it's ammonia free. So it's ammonia free. I'm not bleaching my hair. This is a textures and tones line. So it kind of just lightly lifts the color, your natural color, and adds some beautiful tones to your hair. This was designed by African American stylists and actually made for women of color. So they know that if you have like curly hair, natural hair, that our hair is very prone to damage. It could be very dry. So they kept that in mind when making this because they know we still want to have some fun with color. So these amazing scientists knew that and they actually have jojoba oil, which is an oil that we use all the time for moisture, and five botanical extracts. So let's talk about why the ammonia free is a big deal. So a lot of girls or guys that want to go blonder, they will sometimes just jump to bleach. Bleaching your hair. So when you bleach your hair, that is a very strong ingredient that is going to just pull out and lift all the color in your hair. Like technically your hair would be white, but because of the formula and the protein color of our hair, it kind of makes like that yellow color. And the fact that this does not have any bleach or ammonia, it just lifts a little bit of that color, allowing me to get these golden tones. Another question you guys asked me was how to decide what color you should do. Well, I personally decided to do highlights to add some dimension to my hair. I use the color 6G Honey Blonde. So if my hair was just all one color, it still would be nice, of course, but you really can see my curls now. Like, look, look at this baby right here. Well, not you, sorry, I want this one. Look at that. See how it just stands out against the darkness? So it just really brings out your curls, makes them pop, and actually gives me more dimension, making my hair look fuller instead of flat. It also depends on your current hair color. So even on the box, it'll show you your start color and the ending result. Don't just assume that your hair is going to be exactly like the box because your hair start color might be different. So if your hair is black, it's gonna look more like this color. If it's a dark brown, it's gonna look more like this color. If it's gray, it's gonna look like this. So keep that in mind that you're not necessarily gonna get the exact results of the box girl because you're not the box girl. Your hair might be a different color. It might be a different porosity. It might be damaged or healthier than this girl. You don't know what she's going through. Going blonde, going full blonde. That's another popular question I got. So the best way to do that if you are someone with dark brown or even black hair, is to not just do it instantly, okay? Even if I wanted to go blonde with as healthy of hair as I have, I would not kind of do that risk of just going, you know, commando in one day because your hair will be healthier if you just do a little bit at a time. So yes, if you are a brunette and you want to just go blonde by tomorrow, you can, but if you're worried about damage, 
it's better to do it slowly but surely. The next question I got was how often should you dye your hair? So you should wait at least four weeks, so like a month, between your sessions. So your hair needs some time to grow out. It's good to be maintaining the health of your hair in between your color. So don't just rush into it. I mean, I wouldn't really wanna do blue on Monday and then pink by Friday. Let your hair breathe. How do I maintain my color after dyeing your hair? Which is a great question. If you wanna to commit to color, there is a little bit more maintenance because we have lifted the cuticle with whatever product we use. So when we lift it, we added that color in there. So now that it's lifted, that could change the porosity of our hair. If you don't know what porosity is, I got a full video on that. You could watch that as well. But now that we are adding something to our hair that wasn't always there, it is gonna change how our hair is. But like I mentioned, the Clairol Textures and Tones line does have jojoba oil, the five botanical extracts. So because it has that moisture rich formula, I didn't really notice dryness after adding color. But it is important to deep condition your hair once a week. Now, if you're one of my loyal subscribers, you're already doing this, so it ain't no thing. Now, if I was someone that didn't normally do this, this would be a new added step because it is important to deep condition your hair once a week, especially when you have color to maintain that moisture. But since all of you guys have committed to my deep conditioning challenge, then we're just on the same path. Another important thing post color to remember is how you're washing your hair. This is why, especially for those of you that have color, it is so important not to use a shampoo with sulfate. I'm not saying that if you add color to your hair and then you wash your hair with shampoo with sulfate, it's gonna just like disappear, but you want your color to stay rich and vibrant. And slowly but surely, that sulfate is gonna rip more and more of that color away, leaving your hair looking very dull. So now that you've decided that you want color, let's talk about the prep before dyeing your hair. You actually do not want to shampoo your hair right beforehand. It's best to apply the color on your hair while it's dirty. Now I'm not saying don't take a shower for like three months, let all that product build up and be all like stinky funky, but keeping some of that natural oils on your hair is going to act like a buffer between one, your scalp and the color. So it kind of protects your scalp from any type of chemical, whatever you might be doing. But your hair strands are also just going to take the color better while you have some of that oil on there. That way you're not applying color to stripped out dry hair. One question I got was, should you add color to damaged hair? Well, if your hair is damaged, you really have nothing to lose because it's literally already damaged. But if your hair is healthier, obviously healthy hair with color is gonna look better than damaged hair with color, right? But if you do have healthy hair, you should not be afraid of color. Let me be your living proof. I do have very healthy hair and I've gotten color four times and I absolutely love it. What are Pintura highlights? This is something I really wanna clarify because Pintura highlights is not a type of highlight, it's the technique to how you apply the highlights. Pintura, which means painting. So we're literally just taking one curl at a time and painting the ones that we think should add color. The Pintura technique does not involve foils. If you ever dye your hair and you use foils, the foil is going to heat it up. So anytime you add heat, like whether you're using a heat cap with deep conditioning or being in a steam room, the heat is going to open up the hair cuticles a lot. So that is just going to make all the color rush in there, which makes things a little bit more dramatic and a little more drastic. So I decided to use the Pintura method. That way when you paint each curl, you just let the color sit on there. Just let it out in the air. If anything, you could like wrap some saran wrap over it just a little bit, but you don't want to make it hot because then too much of that color is gonna get in there too fast but you got to follow the instructions, especially when doing a box dye at home. They have very easy instructions in here. I mean, even I did it at home when I've never done it before and it turned out pretty fabulous, but even a suggestion in the box is to do a strand test. So if you're still a little nervous, just get a little piece that you know, no one might see it in case you mess up and then add the color on there. See how it looks after five minutes, see how it looks after 10 minutes. Do whatever the box tells you to do, and then just see the color that you like. If after a certain amount of time, it's still not as blonde as you want it, 
leave it on a little bit longer until you see your desired color. That way, if you leave it on too long, you're like, oh, that's too blonde. You didn't just apply it to your entire head and now you're unhappy. One of the questions I got was, what is the cheapest way to get highlights? Well, if you go to a salon and get it done by a professional, it could cost at least $200 just to get highlights. But the cheapest way, which is actually what I did, was get this box right here, guys. This is the Clairol Textures and Tones line, and it's only like $5.99 available at your local beauty supply store. Five, six dollars? How can you beat that? So there you have it, the truth about adding color to your hair. It's not as scary as some may think. I personally did not want to live my entire life looking the same, and I would encourage you to do the same. Switch it up, get a new cut, maybe bangs, maybe layers, maybe get some highlights, blonde, red, purple, whatever you wanna do. It's your hair and it's possible to get that fun color without getting any damage. And if you already have some highlights or color to your hair, let us know what you think. Are you happy you got color? How did you do it? Was it worth it? Are you happy with your results? Leave a comment below so we all can be encouraged to maybe change up our look. I obviously recommend the Clairol Textures and Tones line. I'll put all the information for this box below as well as my full video on how to apply it to your hair if you do decide to spend the whole $5 and do it yourself. If you want to see how much my hair has changed via cut, color, and all that jazz, you gotta follow me on Instagram at Ms. Bianca Renee. This is also my Twitter and my Snapchat. Let's stay friends and give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I post two new videos every week, once on Friday and once on Sunday. So I hope to see you guys next time. Thanks for watching Bianca Renee today.